Hey guys. I don't know. We're not sewing today. Not yet. We're gonna we just happen to be here. Uh, we're gonna do sewing at some point. We're gonna do all the interior for the GT6, but it's gonna be uh, at a later stage of the restoration. For now, we're still focused on the metal work and probably later we'll do the engine and stuff, but for now, the sewing is to the side. Um, so I don't have much to show you yet from this week because I was sick for a couple of days so I stayed home even didn't uh, come for my official work and this doesn't happen too often actually the last time it happened it was uh, 1997 when I had a kidney stone back home in Bulgaria anyway so I was uh, really sick I had the flu so unfortunately I couldn't do much on the car but now we're going to catch up with uh, some work but uh, before I start with the car I want to show you something else here some tools that uh, I've been given again by Eugene Bulizo. Again, he's, uh, he's such a nice guy. He just gives me so much stuff. But anyways, let me show you. So this is an attachment for uh, floor jack. You can just put it on the floor jack and uh, you can put transmissions here or uh, differential or whatever part you need to lift on the car or drop from the car you can adjust the angles from here but you can lock it with a chain on top so it doesn't fall so that's a beautiful thing for the shop we can use it a lot uh, what else did he give me he gave me this snap-on air chisel i have an air chisel but i bought it for i think 20 dollars used and this one is a snap-on, it's uh, with the quick release here, so it is uh, perfect. Uh, what else? Uh, he gave me this air ratchet. I have one air ratchet, again it is very cheap and uh, doesn't work very well. So this is nice and strong, 3 8 ratchet. If you remember before he gave me a half inch impact gun, and a one inch impact gun now he gave me this half inch again but a stubby one which can go into tight places and uh, he says that uh, it is uh, it has the exact same amount of torque as the big one just it is smaller and it's not designed to be used for uh, regularly daily usage it's only for tight spots because if you use it daily you might damage it but it is a very power powerful one this uh, sozo or this reciprocating so or I don't know what else they call it air so uh, he put this uh, regular hacksaw blade here to show me that I can use even those with this uh, um, with this tool but I can use of course the regular jigsaw blades so that's a beautiful tool I might uh, pass this to chef Tash because he said he uh, needs it I have one which is not very good, but uh, I don't use it too much, so I might pass this to Chef Tash since he liked it. And for Chef Tash as well, this was given to me specifically for him, because like I said, I already got one from Eugene, so now he gave me this one for Chef Tash. He says I noticed in his videos that he doesn't have an impact gun, and that's why he got, me, he got him this one. Inger so round, beautiful. So that's for the chef touch as well. A needle scaler for cleaning uh, rust from tight spots. I haven't used one too much, so I don't know how good or how bad is that. But I think for sheet metal it's going to be too aggressive. But for engine blocks and for thicker sheet metal like uh, frames and stuff, this is going to be useful. So great and the last one he gave me is this uh, 
rivet gun air of course that saves you a lot of labor and a lot of time if you have to do um, many rivets at a time so these are all the tools that he gave me to keep but that's not everything uh, he landed me a whole, a whole bunch of tools that he noticed that I might need or he thinks that I might need or Chef Tash might need because he's a real fan to me and Chef Tash as well so now we start with the tools that he landed to me and I will need to give back at some point so a flat sander for a big sheet of sandpaper and it's uh, air again so that's beautiful uh, this might go to Chef Tash to use because he's gonna be painting his uh, 250 probably sooner than I will be dealing with uh, the GT6 we will see another sander and another one palm sander and another one so all these I will uh, pass on to Chef Tash because uh, maybe when he's doing his uh, bodywork I will be helping him, I hope so I hope he's gonna let me and uh, then we're gonna be able to use multiple tools he just needs to buy a bigger compressor also he noticed that Chef Tash doesn't have a brick so uh, he gave me these uh, attachments for vice so you can put them on the vice and you can bend pieces of sheet metal up to even more than 90 degrees because he saw how I was bending in uh, Chef Tash's garage with uh, rock on a stick <laughs> so he gave me this for Chef Tash as well again I have to return this at some point but he says he doesn't need them for now so we can use them for a couple of months all right next this another die grinder a little air ratchet quarter inch shrinking disc that's for dents I've never used that before but when you have uh, dents or uh, pushed out areas or stretched sheet metal you just uh, use this to hit a local spot and then with uh, wet rag or with spray bottle with water or even with air you can cool down the area and it shrinks and you can bring the metal back to uh, normal otherwise you can just push it in and it's gonna boom, go in and push it out and it's gonna boom, go out but with this you can actually shrink it back to the size that it needs to be and to use that he gave me even this uh, um, I don't know what should I call that but I can mount it here and use it with that he just reminded me that I have to be careful with my knuckles here, right? So, this again I will have to return uh, and again for Chef Tash these are little nut files when you have runs in the paint you can just easily file them and uh, they will go away okay, and the last thing uh, for, I specifically asked for this because I have an engine a TR6 engine that's for the 74 which uh, slowly slowly I'm trying to uh, determine what I need for that and what do I need to do because uh, if you remember the 74 TR6 is still sitting in the corner and when we got it the engine was in containers so now slowly slowly we weren't busy in January in the shop so I decided to measure the cylinders and to see if they need to be rebored or whatever needs to be done and it turns out that they it's been rebored 20 tau over but uh, I think somebody didn't measure right because all the cylinders they are perfectly not out of round not tapered and uh, they are very consistent in size but they are plus 0 0.17 tau not 0 0.20 they are just 3 tau below plus 20. and I'm sure it's not rebored to plus 10 and then it was worn to plus 17 because it would be 
out of round, it would be tapered, uh, the size wouldn't be so consistent between the cylinders. So I need just three tau more uh, the cylinders to be bored out. And for that, he assured me, I'm not uh, familiar, but I will try. He gave me this honing tool with which I can hone them uh, and uh, bring them to uh, plus 20. So this works like that. You can adjust the size. You can go up to, what is that, like almost 4 inches probably. But uh, I need it for TR6 where the cylinders are just below 3 inches. So the minimum size of this is 2 and uh, 3 quarters. So it is perfect for that. So that's everything that he gave me. Of course, this tool I will have to give back. It's I can only imagine how expensive is this tool. But one more time, Eugene, thank you so much for taking care of us and uh, for all the tools that you gave me and for all the tools that you lent it to me. So thank you. It's been half of the video already. So now let's go do some work. No, I didn't cut it again, it's not, uh, that's just from before, but I wanted to show you something, uh, I hope you saw it, did you see all the light coming through? Yeah, that's uh, something that I missed, but thanks to Bob Adams, thank you so much man, for helping me out a uh, second time, I think, <laughs> and giving me advices. All constructive criticism is very, very welcome, I'm not someone who's gonna say, no, you don't know anything and uh, my way is the only way. I uh, thank you so much, Bob, because before with the packing of the uh, hub bearings with grease, you gave me a very good lesson and I appreciate it. And now with the light that is coming through, I missed that and I wasn't gonna do anything more about it. But now that you showed me, I did some more experiments and I'll show you now what I found. Okay, so pay attention to this here. This is the unrepaired area. I repaired up to here and on from here out. But this, rep this area from here to here wasn't repaired because I believed it was good. But look what happens when I point, point light inside. Ta -da! So you see? I thought it was good, but actually it's not. The good thing is that uh, this area here is not bad because up there, it, there was a lot of holes here that was all cheesy. Uh, so I'm thinking here I'm gonna approach it a little bit different and I'm gonna show you now what my idea is. This is where I'm having troubles here now, in this little corner. So I was thinking just to weld it because since I don't have a uh, hose here, cheesy part here, I don't think I need to uh, do too much here. I can grind it a little bit more to make sure that it's not uh, cheesy, like I like to say, but uh, I think this part is still good. The only problem is here in this deep corner. So how do I do that without cutting again the whole piece because I, I don't like to do that because I don't like too much this repair that I did here. I'm gonna have to do some bond to, to bring it back to shape and uh, I don't like distorting too much the metal. So I think for here I might do something different. I might go inside and cut the rear end of the frame but it's gonna be much easier to weld this all the way. So instead of cutting all these stuff like that. So I'm gonna show you now what's inside and I think that's gonna be a better solution. Alright so this is what it looks like inside and you can tell where I've been doing the repairs because I didn't even do the uh, spot welds yet here. I still have to do them. I did this but I have to grind them and this is where I did the other part. So now my problem is between here and here. So I'm just thinking if I cut a piece like that and this is not even attached here this is where I was pointing the light through there's a gap here so I can just cut out a piece from here 
repair the back of the frame and in the meantime I can assess also how is the rest of the whole profile there. I might detach the steering column because it's on my way and we'll go from there. I might make another dream of uh, David's uh, come true because um, I wanted, I, I was thinking to remove the steering column but actually I might pull the whole wiring harness now because it's not attached to anything on the outside, it's not attached to anything on the inside so obviously I can just pull it up and there are just a few little things that are still attached but um, I will see now Chef, the harness is off. You happy now? What I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut a little opening here. Okay, so like I said, just a little hole here. Oops, I think I got carried on a little <laughs> and I went to town, but I'm happy I did that because I see how bad it is now here, how bad it was because now it is going to get fixed, wow, let me bring you closer guys, all right. So you see, this is what I was talking about. Now I can fix this lip. I don't know if you see, but here there are some pinholes. And these are, of course, the patches that I replaced. But uh, I'm happy I did that because now I can see the real damage here. And I think this metal is pretty much okay on the inside. It's pitted, but I think it can uh, survive another 50 years. I'm gonna prime it inside, of course, after I finish, and I might spray a little bit of the bed liner inside, and it's gonna last forever, I'm sure. Anyways, I'm gonna grind it now. I'm gonna use a little bit uh, wire wheel here, and here, and outside, and I'll make sure that there are no more two damaged areas i think here this is perfectly good but still we're gonna check the lip very carefully because this is the weakest point obviously when the metal is getting bent so hard this uh, part the metal from there is just uh, relocated in different areas you know when you stretch something it becomes thinner so that's why uh, when you do such a sharp corners like here can see a hole here these uh, areas just uh, become thinner than uh, the rest of the material uh, so yeah we're gonna see what we're gonna do here I'm gonna clean it up and I'll make sure that uh, there are no pinholes in the flat part of the uh, metal and the metal up there we're gonna just weld I'm sure this is gonna work It 
looks like here. You don't see it, but I'm gonna have to cut a little bit more. And uh, yeah, there are holes all over this edge, from one way to, uh, to the other. Even here between the two patches, because I made one patch and then another one, I left one inch. Even in between these two patches, there are holes. And then all the way here, and here until the end is solid. So at least this side is fine. So now I'm gonna let me try this one first here. I'm gonna weld it from inside and we're gonna see what it looks like. The good news is that the rest of the metal looks fine. It's a little bit pitted, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Mm. That looks beautiful now. Do you see it from there? What I did is actually I just seamed the, the top and the bottom pieces together and that gave me enough strength here to fill it up with welds. So you know what guys, I think I might do that all over. Even here where the new pieces are, just so I don't let water coming in. Alright, so hello from the other side. So everything is welded from here to here, but now here I want to cut even this corner because I need to reach more there. I can see from here that the metal is very pitted in the corner, so I want to figure that too. Lose this piece. I'm so happy because today I fixed my car. -da -da. All right. So that's something else, right? Now for sure there are no more pinholes or anything. So now I can uh, prime it. I'll just run a quick uh, coat of uh, bed liner just because that's what I have and then we can close it. That was fast. Well, there is a broken screw here, so I'm gonna use a little bit of PV blaster there to uh, remove it. All right, this screw didn't want to cooperate, and I kept snapping it more and more with the uh, vice grips. So I'm gonna have to drill it and tap it again for because that's the screw for the sun visors. I'm not sure I'm gonna install sun visors in this car but still I want it to be there. Alright I even cleaned up the other three holes. The burn here. All right. This is just to protect it if any moisture decides to go in from somewhere, even though I don't think so. So now we can put our cover on. And I prime the back properly, and this one too, and now uh, cleaned up the edges. And now we can start putting them together. One. Well. <laughs> mm. 
What? <laughs> Did you see that? Wow. done welding so now we only have to, to grind and we're gonna be done okay it's all ground down and it looks great I'm not gonna go too crazy as usual inside this is not gonna be seen it's gonna be covered by the headliner so I'm just gonna leave it a little bit proud the the weld don't need to go crazy on it I'm just gonna spray some primer and forget about it I even I ground these too so a little bit more but uh, my cutting wheel is too small but the only way to reach there is with the cutting wheel Alright guys, I think that's gonna be it for today, finally we are at the stage, maybe I think this is the third time I say that, where we can put the, the finishing trim on, so that's gonna happen of course in the next video because that's gonna be it, to, to, uh, because that's gonna be it for today as I said, and uh, yeah, stay tuned. And like uh, Cutworm likes to say, I want to say to help each other, love each other, and take care of each other. Bye.